This is Dr. J. Welcome to Thesising 101, where you have no idea what you're doing. In this series, we cover tips and tricks to help you in your research journey. If you're interested and you would like to see more videos like this, please give this a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Today's focus is on frameworks. What are they and why are they important? A special thanks to Sarah Malaji for recommending this topic. Let's get right into it. In its simplest form, a framework is nothing other than a stencil or a pattern. For instance, if I show you these frameworks, you'll be able to recognize it as a house, Legos, and a dog. The five stages of grief? Framework. Maslow's hierarchy of needs? Framework. Frameworks are not exclusive to academia. We use it in our daily lives all the time. We use it to recognize things. Here's an example. This is Luca. Luca is two years old. He grew up in the city and he has a dog named Fluffy. One day on vacation, Luca came across this phenomenon. He doesn't know what it is, so he uses whatever he has as a frame of reference to try and define it. He doesn't recognize this phenomenon as being a house, so he rules that framework out. He also doesn't think that it could possibly be a toy, so he rules Legos out. However, his framework of a dog seems fitting. I mean, this phenomenon has four legs, a tail, and a face with ears. Luca notices that the body of the phenomenon is a little bit bigger than Fluffy's, but other than that, they look like the same thing. So Luca comes to the conclusion that this phenomenon is a big dog. Notice that when Luca changes his framework, he only focuses on what is in the frame and pay no mind to what is outside of it. So what would have happened if Luca had a framework of a horse? This would have changed his conclusion. He may have thought that this phenomenon is a striped horse. And what would have happened if he had a framework of a zebra that he saw in a book or on TV? His conclusion would have been that this phenomenon is a zebra. So as you can see, frameworks influence the conclusions that we draw. In your research, you will draw conclusions that will hopefully influence the reader's perception of the phenomenon you are investigating. Your conclusion may influence their behavior, so we have to be careful around the conclusions that we draw. This is part of the golden thread, by the way. To help us draw meaningful conclusions, we use frameworks. That is what makes it so important. Have you ever wondered why people can look at the same situation and have differences of opinion? It's not because the situation is different, it's because the lens they are using to analyze the situation is different. Here's another example with frameworks that looks more like the ones you will see in academia. This is Adam. Adam is in a meeting and he's not very vocal. When Adam first got to the company, he used to voice his opinion quite often. But over time, Adam has gradually become less vocal. This is Jim, his boss. And this is Pam, a researcher. Both Jim and Pam is trying to solve the same problem. And that is to promote engagements in discussion. Jim uses the only lens that is in his frame of reference to try and analyze the situation. Throughout his lifetime, he heard people speak of extroverts and introverts and associated behaviors. While he doesn't understand the framework, he uses the version he has built in his head in any case. Based on his framework, which to him seems appropriate, Jim is now looking for four legs, a tail, and a face with ears. He interprets Adam's silence as indicative of shy, reserved, and inhibited behaviors and concludes that Adam must be an introvert. Because of this conclusion, Jim decides that he will ask Adam direct questions in meetings in an effort to engage him. He also decides that he needs to speak to the management team to ensure that whenever they see somebody stay silent in a meeting, they should ask direct questions to the person to promote engagement. Pam, on the other hand, thought she would use the spiral of silence framework. This framework is traditionally used in the political science field, but based on her lit review, she sees a lot of similarities between why people stay silent in organizational meetings and why groups of people stay silent in a political setting. So Pam is also looking for her four legs, a tail, and a face with ears. But hers will be different to Jim's because their frameworks are different. As in the way they view the situation is different. While Adam's personality may play a role in why he's not speaking up, Pam does not focus on that because it is outside the scope of her framework. Based on the things she is looking for as per her framework, this is what she sees. Adam is not speaking up because he has a different opinion to what the group is saying. 
And in their company culture, people who are not agreeing with the boss and the popular opinion are retaliated against. So Pam's suggestion is that the company improves their company culture and invite diverse opinions, while Jim suggests asking direct questions. Same problem, different lenses, different conclusions, different outcomes. In summary, frameworks are not as scary as we think they are. We use them in our daily lives all the time. Also, the framework is the lens we choose to investigate our phenomenon. And it influences our conclusions and subsequent outcomes. That concludes this lesson. The next one is focused on how to find a framework for your study. Let me know what other topics you would like me to cover. And don't forget to subscribe. Signing off.